Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to make a comparison between two different techniques to select the periods of time. A common requirement in reporting is to be able to quickly select the last month or the previous month or the last year against the previous year. You can obtain this by creating time intelligence calculations or you can create calculation groups or you can create disconnected tables or no connected table with a many-to-many -many pattern. Now, I'm not interested in the part about the time intelligence calculation. I want to compare a solution created using calculation groups against a solution created using the many-to-many -many pattern. The two solutions provide the very same results, the very same user experience, but uh, there is an important difference in the way they are solved internally. The takeaway of the entire video is that the two solutions are quite close. Unless you have a very large database, choosing one versus the other is not really important. There are no compelling reasons to choose one against the other. Nonetheless, as it always happens with these videos, it's important to see the process of investigating about performance, because no matter what my findings are, in your model things might be different. Data distribution matters. Your model is different than mine. You might have good reason to choose one technique against the other one. So, let's get started with the demo. We start looking at the two different solutions that we investigate on performance, and finally, as we always do, we draw some conclusions. Let's get started. The goal of the report uh, is to create a, uh, a matrix like this one. I'm slicing by brand, and I have the last month and the previous month, the last six months and the previous six months, the last year and the previous year. And I want my user to make the selection very, in a very simple way. So all that what they need to do is start from a matrix that just shows the brand and the sales amount, uh, then drop the period calculation group or the period configuration table and uh, automatically you have the entire calculation. The solution can be implemented in two different ways uh, or actually it can be implemented in multiple different ways but I'm interested in comparing only two of them. The first one is to use a calculation group. Uh, this is uh, the source of the report we are looking at here. We have the, the calculation group here. Let me show you the code of the calculation group. We need to launch a tabular editor in order to look at the calculation group. Then we place it in the right monitor and we look at the period calculation group. Let's script the DAX code so we can look at that. The calculation group contains multiple calculation items. Last month, checks for the last date ever, and then it uses uh, dates between and end of month in order to compute the last entire month. Previous month does the same, but with some mathematics on the end of month, retrieves uh, the beginning and the end of the previous month. And in a similar way, we have the last six months, the previous six months, and then the last year and the previous year. Each calculation item has the very same shape. It checks the data and finally it uses calculate the selected measure with the dates between in order to find the set of dates that contribute to the time to the period selection that I want to show. So it's pretty easy to write uh, this code. You just write one and then you do some tweaking about the numbers in order to find the correct way of computing the values. But it is using the dates between function. So dates between, uh, as any time intelligence function, is resolved in the formula engine. That means uh, the DAX engine will need to scan the date table, compute the dates between, and then run further vertical queries in order to retrieve the numbers that we want to obtain. That is for the calculation groups, but there is another possible solution. I have another report here, many-to-many, -many, that is using the many-to-many -many pattern. In order to build this pattern, we start from a configuration table. Uh, I do have it, let me see here. I have the period configuration table. Let me zoom in a bit. Here it is, where I define a table that contains last, last month, previous month, last six months, and previous six months. So all the rows, the same calculation that I had in the calculation items. But then I have a delta and a month, the number of months. Delta is uh, how many months to go back from the current date, 
and month is the duration of uh, this period. This is a very simple configuration table that you can easily build. I built it in DAX, but you can build it in whatever way you like. And then I created a period table where the period table is just a DAX expression that uses generator to scan the period config and then uses dates between to find all the dates that compose a period. The resulting table contains the date, the period, and the order. And you can see the resulting table here. I have a date to which period it belongs and then the order that is only needed to sort the strings of the names. Now that I have the date, I can create a relationship between the period table here and the the period table and the date table. Now, for one single date, a single date might belong to multiple periods. For example, uh, the date of today belongs to both the last month and the last year, and also to the last six months. So the date is not a key in the period table. That means the relationship between period and date has the many side on the period and the one side on the date, meaning that date filters period, but that is not the effect I want. I want period to filters date. That is one of the very few scenarios where bidirectional cross filter makes a lot of sense. I want period to filter data, so I enable bidirectional cross filter on the relationship between period and date. And the net effect of all this is that when I when I'm here, I get rid of uh, the period right now. I have brand and sales amount. If I take period and I just drop the period on the columns, then this period will filter the date table and in turn the date table will filter the sales table. So I don't have to change anything in the code, neither with calculation groups nor with this solution. All my measures will work smoothly. But the thing is, which one is better and why? Well, there are multiple considerations to make. First, if you are using the calculation group solution, that means whenever you want to create a new selection, you need to write DAX code. You need to create a new calculation item, you need to find a way to express the code that you want, and finally you implement it, deploy, and make it work. But DAX code, whenever you want to change, to add or to change the definition of the periods. Whereas with the configuration table, you just add the line to the configuration table, the calculated tables are recomputed, and everything works smoothly without writing a single line of DAX code. So it looks like the many-to-many -many pattern is better from a maintenance point of view. But you also need to take into account that with calculation groups, you have more freedom. Because you write DAX code, you can write whatever expression you want. If, for example, you want to go at the week level and write uh, a period that is last week, previous week, or last 12 weeks and previous 12 weeks, uh, you can easily do that with the calculation groups uh, because you can write DAX code. Whereas uh, with the many-to-many -many pattern, you will need to change the configuration table and make it work at the week level rather than at the month level as it is doing now. So there are pros and cons in both solutions, and you need to evaluate them uh, the way you like. I don't have, honestly, a strong point in favor of one against the other. They are nearly the same, but there is, instead, there is a difference. What is important is uh, the difference in terms of performance. As we are going to see, there is not a big difference in terms of performance if you work with small models. There is a difference with large models, but they are very different in the way they solve the code at the internal level. Let me elaborate on this. Let's build a query that groups by, that groups by a few columns and then computes an expression. And we do that by first using the calculation group and then we use the many-to-many -many pattern in order to see the differences. To do that, I need DAX Studio. So let me open DAX Studio. And then we write a query. So that will be evaluate. Uh, let me see the query that I wrote. So I do that the same as in the article. Okay. We just use summarize columns uh, by product brand. 
I need a few columns to do the summarize because otherwise it will just be too fast. So we summarize by customer country, by customer gender, and then by store name. And then we just compute the sales amount. That is the sales amount. We do enable the query plan, the server timings, and then if I run it right now, I obtain a result that uh, is totally useless from my point of view, but I'm not interested in this result. I now want to apply first the calculation group. And to apply a calculation group, I add a further grouping by, by period calculation group, and also by the ordinal uh, period, no, period period calculation group ordinal because I will want to sort by both the name and the ordinal. Now the calculation group is going to kick in. I already have the server timings. I have the query plan. Let's make it run. What do we expect here? Well, what I expect is that first, because I have multiple calculation groups, multiple calculation items that are being applied, First, the engine will need to retrieve the date dimension, so all the dates, because the formula engine will need to scan the table in order to compute the different periods that I'm interested in computing. And then, once the periods have been computed, they will drive the execution of uh, uh, vertical queries that retrieve the results. Let's take a look at that. We have uh, the query plan, which is kind of long. Look at that. We have 2,000 lines in the query plan, the nightmare of any DAX developer. But let's look at the server timings that probably will give us a better picture of what is happening. Let's see if I can make it fit on the screen. But well, not really, but we can look at that. We have a first scan that retrieves just the calculation groups. Then, as expected, we have a query that just retrieves all the dates. Then we have another small scan. We have a set of small scans to retrieve the axis of my query. And finally, we have the real queries, which are all here. 39 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, 33 milliseconds. This is where the code is actually being executed. And you see that all these queries, they group by gender, country, brand, store name. They compute the sum of the expression with a set of joins. And then we have the where condition. The first one retrieves 31 values. The second one retrieves 183 values, that is six months. The third, another one, another 183, then 366 a year. So what happened is that uh, the formula engine computed the filters on the date and then pushed those filters to the storage engine. Multiple storage engine queries, one for each period that need to be computed, and some interleaving between the storage engine and the formula engine, they are working together. And uh, the time is, of course, very fast, 11 milliseconds, sorry, 76 milliseconds of formula engine and 287 milliseconds of storage engine. Let's see what happens if we do the same, but instead of using the calculation group, but we just use the period table. So we need to group by period, period. This is the table that will filter the date. And then we also want the period order. Everything is already set, so we can just run it. And let's start by looking at the query plan. Now, what I expect is something entirely different. Indeed, what happens is that uh, the query plan, it was 2,000 rows before, it's only four rows now, because the entire query can be pushed down to the storage engine, because it uses relationship rather than DAX code. And if we look at the server timings, uh, things again are very different. You see that we do no longer have all those queries. We have uh, uh, just one batch, and the batch computes uh, the entire code. It's impossible to read it that way, so we go uh, we go in a new window where we can increase the font. Okay, uh, there is first the definition of a table that uh, retrieves uh, the period and the table order with a join, 
Then it creates a simple index n that is a bitmap index that will be used in order to apply the filter. Then creates a shallow relationship. And finally, we have the code that actually computes uh, here, the code that actually computes everything. I should format it, but you will find it formatted on the article. There's no point in looking at the entire code during the video. The important part is that there is only one query that executes everything, and it is mainly a storage engine query. So it, if we were working on a very large model, that would benefit from parallelism and all the uh, features uh, that Vertipak offers and the Formula engine does not. But on this model, performance is nearly the same. It's 250 milliseconds against the 270 or whatever that was before. The variance is of 10, 20 milliseconds every time I execute it. So basically they are running at the very same speed. There are no differences. But what if I test it on a much larger model? So if instead of using a model like the current one that only contains 10 million rows, we go on a much larger model, maybe there we will find some difference. And in order to do that, unfortunately, I don't have the model ready, so we need to create it on the fly. I already have tabular editor open here. I need a new tabular editor that I connect with the Contoso model that is running on my analysis services, where I have 1.4 billion rows in a single fact table. So I need to open a model directly. We go on analysis services, we connect with this model. Now in this model, I do not have, you see, uh, all the configurations. So I need to go here, take the period configuration, the period and the three tables. I just copy them, then go here. I paste them. Where should I do that? Okay. Based them, and I have period, period calculation group, and period config, everything in the model. I also need to create a relationship. And the relationship starts from period that goes period date and goes to day date. Um, many, and I want it to be bidirectional. Okay. I can save it and then refresh the model. That will be very fast because uh, it just need to compute a calculated table and then uh, build the relationship. So there's nothing complex to do. Then we can go back to, okay, to Dark Studio. We already have the version that runs with uh, the many to many, but we need to connect this time with uh, tabula. With the right model, optimizing the model, we have the period calculation group. We activate you no know, query plan and server timings. Okay, and we run it. Now it's running against 1.4 billion rows. And you see, this is the version that is using the many to many pattern. There is still one single scan, there is a good degree of parallelism. And uh, it's computing the values. It's a bit slower, of course, because the fact table is much larger. Even though selecting one year and one month, uh, it's strongly reduced. But it runs uh, in uh, half a second of execution time, 14,000 milliseconds of storage engine query. What happens if we do the same, but we do that by using the calculation group? I have the calculation group. I have the calculation group, and then we also need the ordinal, and then we run it. It's a bit slower, and the pattern is, again, similar to before. We have storage engine CPU that is kind of close, but the total is 1.1 second. That means twice as slow. It is not that it is, it is already, it is terribly slow, meaning that one second to compute all those values is definitely a very good time. The difference is that uh, right now I'm running on a quite powerful machine with a lot of cores. There are 64 cores available. Therefore, if you can push calculations to the storage engine, you can benefit from the parallelism that is available at the storage engine. 
in order to obtain that, in order to exploit this uh, power, you need a very powerful server. If I had a more regular server, let's say with 16 cores or with 8 cores, then the difference between the two, that would be really tiny because I would not be able to run all those queries in parallel. So the difference is significant only if you have a very large model and a very powerful machine. That is the, the moment when you can actually use the full power of the storage engine. Now, before leaving the topic, I want to show you that Right now, I'm using an additive calculation like the sales amount. Now, with additive calculation, there is some difference between the two techniques. But as soon as we use a non-additive calculation like a distant count, then the difference is really, really tiny, up to the point that you can no longer measure it. Let me show you that. In order to, uh, to run the demo, let's connect again Oh, we can do that here because I do have in sales, I have the number of customers. If I use number of customers as a measure, number of customers computes a distinct count of the customers. Let me show you what it does. It's rather simple. It just computes a distinct count of the sales customer key. So there is nothing uh, complex. Actually, it's probably better Customers is very large, so it will take forever. Uh, whereas product computes the sales product key. I have many, I have, don't have a lot of products. I have a lot of customers. So it's probably going to be a bit faster. Now, if I use a distant count using the calculation groups, uh, what happens uh, is that the pattern is the same. Of course, it's going to be a bit slower, 1.9 seconds, but it computes a distant count. And the pattern is the same. You see that I have a, a set of queries at the beginning, with, followed by storage engine query that computes each individual result. What is interesting to see is uh, how the pattern changes uh, using the period table. If I get rid of the period and I, the calculation group, and instead I use uh, the period from the disconnected table, and after that, the period order to perform the sorting, and I run it, this query before was using just one storage engine query with a complex batch computing everything. But if I run it now, you will see that the effect is very different. This is no longer the pattern that we had before. We have a first scan that retrieves from the period table the, um, the date, the periods, and the order. And then we had a set of storage engine queries, each one with a set of filters on the date. So as soon as you use non-additive calculations, the difference between the two measures becomes really tiny because uh, uh, the technique used by the internal engine is the same uh, between the calculation group and the many-to-many uh, -many pattern. As you have seen, uh, there are subtle differences uh, between using the many-to-many -many pattern or using the calculation groups. From the maintenance point of, point of view, well, probably the many-to-many -many pattern is a bit easier if you just need to add periods over time. But if you need to change the grain, then it is probably better to use a calculation group. On a small model, performance is nearly the same. There are no significant differences. On a very large model, if you have a very large model and a quite powerful machine, then it might make sense to move towards the many-to-many -many pattern because that relies more on the storage engine. Therefore, it executes queries which are better and run faster with a better degree of parallelism. Of course, always keep in mind that uh, these are the findings on our machine, on our database, on the queries that we executed. If you want to perform some tests like the ones that we did on your machine, then do them before making the choice. No performance choice can be made using DAX unless you tested several different options on your specific model. Enjoy DAX!